Hi, and welcome back to Conscious Living. Well, the birds are chirping, the weather's warming up, the sun is shining, and it's a perfect time to focus on rejuvenation. And you know, your diet is a great place to start. Mm -hmm. Most doctors even agree now that a plant-based diet is essential to long-term health. Yeah, it's true, but fortunately, most people think that going vegan means you have to give up the foods you love, or you're gonna have to give up protein, or that just doesn't taste good. Well, boy, are they missing out. Tell me about yeah, it. Yeah, well, you guys are in the right place, because today, Vegan Man has not one, but two stellar recipes. Mm -hmm. Starting out first with a vegan brunch made with all the comfort food fixings, and finishing up with a raw vegan strawberry cheesecake that's gonna satisfy your sweet tooth. Nothing but good eating here. Isn't that right? You know that, man. <laughs> And it's officially farmer's market season, so Bianca's scouting out one of D.C.'s best local markets to find out why foodies near and far keep coming back. And if accepting your body is a challenge, come along as I learn to embrace my inner goddess through the ancient art of belly dancing. Or if you just need some downtime, our favorite nun is in the house to share with us how silent retreats can make you happier, healthier, and even live longer. All this and more coming up on Conscious Living. You know, there's nothing that satisfies like a big brunch. But when you're vegan, what do you do? You can't eat eggs, you can't eat bacon, you can't eat sausage. Tofu scramble. It's delicious, comfort food, all the fixings. You're gonna love it. Let's get started. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take half of a red onion and we're gonna put one jalapeno pepper into our pan with a little bit of olive oil and get them going. Next, we're gonna add our vegan sausage. This is a great vegan sausage. It's a maple apple sausage, and we wanna get a little bit of brown on this sausage. Next, we're gonna deal with the tofu scramble. So what we have here is we have one package of firm tofu. Now, we wanna make sure it's firm because when it's firm, you're gonna get a little bit of crumble, so it's gonna feel a little bit like scrambled eggs might feel. Uh, if it's too firm, then it just says super rigid and boxy, and we don't want that. We're gonna add one tablespoon of nama shoyu. You could also use tamari if you want to go gluten-free. Next, we've got two cloves of garlic to really add a nice punch to it. Two teaspoons of Dijon mustard. I have an organic Dijon mustard. Now, I got everything that you see here at Mom's Organic Market. It's my favorite organic market. I'm going to add two tablespoons of nutritional yeast. Okay, nutritional yeast is our vegan's secret weapon. It's got a nice cheesy flavor to it. Then we're gonna add our spices. Half teaspoon of turmeric, we got a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. With that jalapeno pepper, is gonna add some nice heat to what we're doing, some sea salt. We're gonna add our pepper. Okay, about a half teaspoon of pepper. And some fresh herbs. One teaspoon of basil and two teaspoons of sage. And then we're just gonna mix everything up, okay? Right here with our tofu. Just go ahead and mix it up. And already you can see we're starting to get a little bit of crumble here. And that turmeric is going to give us that nice yellow feel that's going to feel like eggs, but without the harm to animals. Isn't that fun? See how our onions and our jalapenos are doing? We've got some nice action happening on, this, uh, on these vegan sausages. We're going to add our tofu scramble to our onions and our jalapenos. Go ahead and add those. And we'll just stir this in. Get all that delicious goodness, cruelty-free goodness, we call this. Perfect for Mother's Day if you're so inclined. Sometimes you just, especially for brunch, you just want to bite into something meaty, something that's, that's really hearty, something that really satisfies. Tofu is a great alternative to eggs. We got our uh, vegan sausage happening. Let's get some toast. Best gluten-free toast I've ever tasted, Sammy's Bakery. This is light, it's fluffy, this is the millet flax toast. We've got our organic jam. I love this coconut spread from Earth Balance. You get a little bit of sweetness from the coconut spread, super easy. Mmm, you gotta smell that. It is delicious. Okay, got that nice uh, little char happening on the, on the sausages. You know, vegan sausage is great because most sausages, you don't know what's in there. It could be, you know, crow's feet and rat turds and all kinds of stuff. This is great. It's got no animal products. It's good for you. It's super tasty. Okay, looks like our, uh, our tofu's in good shape. Mmm, smell that. Smells delicious. We're going to take that off the heat. And now we're going to dress our toast. So our toast came out. 
butter it up. Lots and lots of butter. Everything better with butter. And now we got our jam. Cherry jam. I love organic jam. You can taste the difference so much between organic and non-organic. Mmm. Wow. That's awesome. Now we've got our tofu scramble, and what we're going to do is we're going to add to that a cup of organic heirloom cherry tomatoes. And now that we've taken it off the heat, we're just going to mix that up like that. Okay. Looks delicious. Add a couple sausage to the mix here. Nice brown color to them. And then what I'm going to add to this, a raw vegan cheese from Treeline. Vegan cheese made out of cashews, like uh, goat cheese. And I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of that on my tofu scramble. Mmm. Wow. That's dynamite. A little bit of sausage. Yes, folks, this is what I'm talking about. Brunch, vegan man style, you're going to love it. Everybody in your family is going to love it. So now that we've fed our bellies, it's time to feed our souls. Up next, we're going to learn how silent meditation retreats might be just what the doctor ordered. Don't go away. For me, one of the best ways to rejuvenate is by taking silent meditation retreats. So today we have Brahmacharini Allison, who's the head monastic at the Self-Realization Fellowship Greenfield Retreat Center, who's gonna give us some tips on how to take silent meditation retreats and some of the benefits on incorporating this powerful ritual into our everyday lives. Hello, Brahmacharini. Hello, Bianca. Thank so you for having wonderful me. wonderful to have you here. Thank you. You know, I'm curious, I haven't spent a lot of time with monastics, and I'm just curious, how did you get on this very interesting life path? Well, I was working in the movie industry in Hollywood at the time, and I found there that the rich and famous were not necessarily rich in happiness, and so I went on a search, who's happy? And the happiest person I found was a senior monk in the self-realization order, and I, I wanted his happiness. Mm -hmm. But I started to learn to meditate, and with the meditation lessons came a flyer about monastic life. Mm -hmm. And when I realized what I was holding, it suddenly occurred to me, I can be a nun. And the silence came over me, and in that silence was peace, and in that peace was happiness, and I knew that was it. Wow, beautiful. So for the average person who may not want to become a monastic, what are some ways that they can incorporate meditation and stillness and sort of that inner knowing you talk about mm -hmm. into their everyday lives? Giving yourself an opportunity to be quiet is one of the ways. Giving yourself time to, for silence, unplugging from all of your technology, mm -hmm. taking a walk in nature, uh, reading, those who have a path that they follow, prayer, meditation, and so forth. Mm -hmm. Just anything that winds them down from their normal, busy, active mm -hmm. lives. Yeah. It's so needed in this like over-information age. And mm -hmm. one of the things that you all specialize in at the Greenfield Retreat Center are retreats, yes. silent meditation retreats. Tell me a little bit about those. What are those like? We have uh, three cottages that women can come and take silent retreats, and those cottages are equipped with kitchens and laundry, and, and people can come for, women can come for up to two weeks. Mm -hmm. And they can uh, walk on our grounds. We have a large area with gardens, and they can get out in nature. And they can join us for our morning and evening meditations if they wish. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And so, you know, for a person who maybe hasn't meditated before, I know that there's tremendous science about the benefits of meditation and silent mm -hmm. retreats on health and wellness. What would you say is kind of a first step for them? A first step? probably would be to get used to the idea of silence, to step back from your technology, realize that within you is a wellspring of joy that is left untapped most of the time, and give yourself that quiet time to touch that and see how it will enliven and rejuvenate, rejuvenate your life. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. It's beautiful. Just being silent, I mean, even without a specific scientific technique is so powerful. It, it goes completely contrary to what we're all told and, and what we all believe that we have to be constantly moving, constantly talking, right. or constantly listening to something. Yeah. yeah. Um, so for people who maybe can't get to the Greenfield Retreat, what are some other locations um, where they can maybe uh, enjoy some of the, the practice that you talk about? Any place that's special to them, mm -hmm. out in the woods, 
They could go on the beach. They can have a retreat in their own home. But there are also places that you can go. The Self-Realization Fellowship has a number of uh, places, three in California, one specifically for men. We have one in India, we have one in, in Germany. And the monks also tour in the country and have uh, retreats scattered throughout the country and actually internationally as well. Mm -hmm. So um, just as a, as a basic kind of like meditation 101, I know it's something that a lot of people say that it's hard to begin. Any tips that you'd give our viewers out there for you know learning how to sit and meditate? If you sit still, just try to keep your spine straight, your feet flat on the floor, and keep the head in alignment with your spine and focus the eyes in a gentle upward position and relax and keep the body and mind relaxed. Keep the shoulders back, the abdomen in, and just watch and be aware of your breathing. If you don't have any scientific meditation techniques, just be aware of your breath flowing in and out. Beautiful, beautiful. So any final words for encouraging people to maybe go ahead and take that, that retreat that they've been putting off? I think, I think it's a matter of prioritizing and realizing that the priority, if you make the priority be silence and meditation that it's going to benefit all the other parts of your life so giving yourself that permission to take some time in silence paramahansa yogananda said when the mind becomes still you're in the kingdom of the infinite mm. beautiful well those are beautiful final words and thank you so much for the inspiration i can't wait to get back to greenfield for a retreat of my own don't go away because coming up we're going to go to one of the top farmers markets in the u.s we'll see you in a minute You know, living consciously can seem overwhelming and daunting at times, but the fact is, it's easier than you may think. From shopping locally and minimizing your carbon footprint to wearing eco fashion, there's plenty of everyday choices that do add up. This week, we're at our local farmer's market to stock up on some fresh produce. And up next, we'll show you how family farms are literally changing the way we eat. Don't go away. This is Conscious Living. There's nothing like a day spent shopping at the farmer's market. It's a fun, healthy way to find produce, taste some new varieties, and get to know your local farmer. Honey, you say if you eat a spoonful every morning, you won't have allergies. You start in the spring. Because of the fall. the fall, and you get immune to the fall. That's totally wrong. All right. That's Raw honey, a musket. Thank you. Thank you. So this is um, Kalalu, or Jamaican spinach. And what we can see here is the texture of the leaf is very similar to some of the spinach varieties we have here in the States with this beautiful purple color. But in reality, it's actually part of the amaranth plant. And if we're familiar with amaranth plant, it's a tall, almost taller than us, with beautiful flowers coming out the middle of the stalk. The Jamaican Kalalu, typically paired in Jamaica, prepared in Jamaica, is a darker green, fuller green, and the leaves are a bit thicker. And that's the, the if you go to Jamaica, they'll put it in curried anything, kalalu stew with saltfish. Um, it's, it's absolutely delicious. The farmer's market is also a great way to enjoy the outdoor. We got a rainy day special on raspberries and sun gold. Unless it starts to rain. Even the weather didn't stop these conscious consumers who endured the elements to get the season's freshest picks. The farmer's market is also about community. It's about standing in line and, oh, I miss, I woke up too late. I miss this, I yeah. miss that. <laughs> or I caught Next, the rain. Yeah. yeah, I caught the rain. Yeah, really. <laughs> learn why Fresh Farm Markets has such a loyal following, we caught up with its executive director, who shared with us why this market is different than most. Where, what kind of market is this? I'm not sure the kind, but it's oh. supposed to be fragrant. It said it will smell like roses once it gets mm, a little bigger. I can smell. Nice. Fresh Farm Markets is a 501c3 nonprofit organization based in Washington, D.C. We use farmers markets to educate people about 
food and environmental issues. Um, we do program activity in addition to farmers markets and we've been doing uh, farmers markets for the last 15 years. So we have farmers that are growing organically, biodynamically, and also using integrated pest management practices, which means using a natural way of controlling a pest in their orchard or in the field so that they're not spraying chemicals out there a lot, that they're paying attention to the health of the plant, their soil, their personal health, and what they bring to market. You know, when we started in 97, no one was asking for fresh, healthy food, local food. They were saying, why would I buy it if it's cheaper in the grocery store? And we said, come to the market. You're gonna see varieties at the farmer's market you will never see in the grocery store. This food is grown for flavor, not for shipping. It's grown to really be tasty and delicious. Now, when everybody's got all these tomatoes in the market and the peaches, compare the prices to the grocery store, you're gonna have about the same amount of price value and the quality is gonna be higher and the value is gonna be more. What people say to us, they take home the product from the market and it lasts so much longer. Why? Probably pick the day before it comes to market. And that means, you know, it hasn't traveled across the country for a week to get to your store. It means you've got the freshest product, which means you're not losing food. You're not throwing away any food. You're getting better value for your dollars. But you're also putting money into the farmer's pocket. And that farmer is seeing a future in agriculture because you're supporting him. There are other markets in D.C. that basically you show up, you can resell other farm products. You can have stuff from Florida, Chile. Fresh Farm Markets does producer-only farmers markets, which means that we have a formal application to this market. Farmers must apply annually. We visit the farms so that we ensure the integrity of the product that people are bringing to market. And we have a defined geographic area for the markets. Every year, our farmers is very generous, but it's about 50,000 pounds of fresh food gets donated to these other nonprofit partners. And Miriam's Kitchen is our gleaning partner at our Foggy Bottom Market. They say it helps save them about $40,000 in food costs for what's donated by our farmers over the season. And so they use that money in savings to do other programs to help the homeless. So, you know, it's giving back to the community where your markets are located and have, building a sustainable community out of this food, this great local food. To better serve the community, Fresh Farm created a program that makes produce available regardless of income. Fresh Farm Markets decided to apply to USDA to be able to redeem food stamps at our farmers markets. And what we do is, if you come with your swipe card, we give you $1 tokens to shop at the farmers markets with that. In addition, the WIC and the senior and the food stamp people, we give an additional matching dollar, up to $15 in free matching dollars to shop at the farmers market. Last year we gave out $30,000 in free matching dollars. This year it will probably be 40,000, and it's people donating to our nonprofit organizations, some foundations, but again, giving back to the community, making sure again, this healthy food is getting to where it's needed most. As we evolve into more gender equality on the planet, communities that celebrate the divine goddess and invoke the sacred feminine become more important. In Washington, D.C., one such community, Sahara Dance, is using the ancient art of belly dancing to help women heal, transform, and embrace their bodies. I love belly dance because I think it's the perfect medium for helping women to enjoy their bodies. I also love the creative expression and the beautiful music I get to dance to. I get to do all of this and feel healthy and fit. Belly dance can be especially powerful for women seeking to reconnect with their femininity. And um, in DC especially, women work really hard and sometimes they lose touch with that quality of the divine feminine or feeling like a goddess and feeling beautiful. And belly dance can help them to reconnect with that part of themselves. Celebrate it. Very few places in our culture that fully support and embrace all qualities being feminine, and in the belly dance studio and within this art form, uh, everything that is feminine about a woman can be supported, and not even just supported, celebrated. Women come and they learn to love their bodies just as they are, and then the beauty they discover within themselves 
begins to emanate. And it doesn't matter what shape or size, uh, that beauty is available to all women, and I see it grow in the studio all the time. The women who have come into the studio and experience transformation through belly dance, um, it can be subtle. The pelvis and the belly, it can hold a lot of emotion for people, and as they begin to move, uh, those emotions can be released and transformation can spread in positive ways throughout their whole lives. I've seen all kinds of transformations through belly dance, uh, subtle transformations where women come in with sunken posture, and they're covering their bellies and they're a little bit um, embarrassed or not comfortable, and then just within a few weeks they'll be showing their bellies and standing tall and being confident, and uh, you know, these transformations I've seen come into other parts of their lives. So new relationships, new jobs. After attending an open house, I found out firsthand how much fun belly dancing can be, not to mention a great workout. Master teacher and performer, Rachel K. Brookmeyer broke down the basics. The first is a shimmy, hip shimmy. And the second would be an undulation of the pelvis. Mm -hmm. And the third would be a hip drop. Give your belly some jiggle. There we go, Lilla. Here we go. Okay, <laughs> knees soft, lift the low belly, lengthen the low back, reach the ribs up, open the collarbones, frame the hips, and breathe, and we're gonna shimmy. Good, using the knees. Two, three, four, a little bigger, five, six, seven, and turn to the left. Belly dance is also a really social activity. So not only is it great exercise and an artistic outlet, but it lets people make friends and have a community. It's fun to dance with other women and have a supportive place to play and have fun together. And more importantly, I think, and in spiritual traditions, any sort of deep transformation is often nurtured by a community. And so having a place where women can truly be supportive of each other's transformation and each other's full beauty, that's really special. You know, when springtime hits, there's nothing like fresh berries on dessert. So today I'm sharing with you my famous raw strawberry cheesecake. It's creamy, it's decadent, it's oh so delicious, and it's good for you. Let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is we need to make the crust. So we're gonna start out with two cups of pecans, and we're gonna take four or five medjool dates. If they're a little dry, you can soak them. And then a quarter teaspoon of sea salt. And then we're just gonna blend it up. And we're looking for a consistency that's about like a lara bar. So see how that sticks together? It's real nice. We're gonna take out our pan and we're gonna press the crust into the pan. So we pressed our, our crust into the pan. We have a nice crust here. And then next we're gonna start on our filling. So the first ingredient for the filling, we have three cups of cashews. I'm gonna just dump those here into our food processor. Some people say soak your cashews. I don't think you need to. You maintain more of the, of the taste. And then we're just gonna blend this up. Okay, now the cashews have a nice crumble here. That's about the consistency we want. Cashews are heart healthy. They're a great source of protein and super delicious. And they're great because they're very soft nut and they're pliable. We're gonna add one quarter cup of lime, lime juice, half a cup of maple syrup. You could also use agave if you like that or coconut nectar. I like maple syrup. Quarter cup of coconut water. We have one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Ideally, vanilla extract without alcohol in it. Vanilla extract, you could also use vanilla beans. Sometimes I use vanilla beans. Then we're gonna just start blending that up, okay? Now we're starting to get a nice blend, and we're gonna add our strawberries. Four cups of strawberries. So we're just gonna start adding those strawberries in. And you'll see this is gonna to start to turn a nice pink color. Just adding those strawberries in. And as it's blending, 
what we're gonna do is we're gonna add half a cup of coconut oil. This is gonna give it that, that really creamy, almost cream cheese flavor, but you gotta make sure it's liquefied. Nice and slow. I'm gonna do it slow so it, everything gets uh, evenly distributed. I think we're about good. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it a quick run around with the batter, see how liquidy that is. It's a nice liquid batter. No chunks, no chunks, no drips, no airs. And the batter just goes straight onto the crust. And you just drop it in right like that. Nice. We're gonna cover it and we're gonna drop it in the fridge for anywhere from six to eight hours. You could also put it in the freezer to make it set. Okay, so now we have our final cake. Beautiful cake. And I made a little coulis. Now the coulis is real easy to make. You take about a quarter cup, half cup of strawberries, a quarter cup of maple syrup, give it a couple pulses in the food processor. And then we're just gonna drizzle this real nicely like this. Okay. Boom. Okay. And then let's slice it up. Okay, get a nice slice here. Beautiful. Look at that. Creamy. That coulis just uh, dripping over. You've got that beautiful crust. Let's give it a taste. Mmm. 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 So creamy. The crust is terrific with that pecan. Delicious, delicious strawberry flavor. No one will ever know there's not cream cheese in this. They're going to love it. Happy spring, enjoy yourself, enjoy your fresh berries. I'm gonna enjoy this. We'll see you next time. Mm. Mm. Yeah, boy, slamming. That pie was slamming. Well, now that I've had dessert, I think I'm ready for some brunch. It's good, right? You following us yet? Mm. Come on now, you gotta get hip to it. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, behind the scenes mm. action, mm. ConsciousLivingTV.com. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next time. Well, that's all for this week. We'll see you next time. But first I gotta get out of here. <laughs>